Okay, so th thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for introduction. And my name is Shinichiro Matsu. I'm a research professor at Georgetown University. And uh, this is, I think that this is the last talk, last talk of, this, of this presentation. So uh, my, the goal of my talk is providing the, my knowledge or our experience in the past history of the, to create a decentralized something to help something. <laughs> but uh, so I think that this is a, a good lesson learned from the, the past to figure out uh, what we should do for the, to utilize some decentralizing technology to help scientist ecosystem. Okay, that, okay. If you consume this as, as a buzzword or marketing word, this, not, this talk is not for you. You know, that if you are serious about improving the science community by using decentralizing technology and the, your life, that you can find some good uh, lesson learned from the past uh, history. And this is, this is a very, very busy slide and uh, uh, I don't have to uh, explain this slide uh, as much, but uh, my background in cryptography and its application, I'm a, I'm a research scientist over 27 years. And currently I'm uh, doing a lot of job for the re uh, research and uh, standardization for the blockchain technology. And I'm directing the uh, blockchain research center at the Georgetown University in Washington DC. And I say the same thing for the every presentation. I don't have any crypto assets for academic neutrality because that if I have Bitcoin and I write some academic paper for the improving Bitcoin technology, but someone say that, so this paper is intended intend that to increase the price of Bitcoin. So for the academic neutrality purposes, I don't have any crypto assets. And I would like to start with the, uh, my two past experience in 2015 and 16. And this is uh, about eight, eight, seven or eight years ago. The one is a scaling Bitcoin workshop. Uh, the other is the initiation of the BSEF.net network. In a scaling Bitcoin, I initiated in September of 2015 in Montreal, Canada. And that, that is an interesting collaboration between the Bitcoin core engineers and academic uh, communities. Uh, to discuss about that some potential solutions of the fundamental scientific problem. This is the scalability of the permissionless blockchain. Because as you may know that that, that truly permissionless blockchain is not scalable. So for example, Bitcoin can process just seven transactions per second globally. But yes, so we, we had to that uh, discuss about the potential wide range of solutions to mitigate that, that kind of scientific problem with engineers and the academic communities. And this is the reason why we initiated that series of scaling Bitcoin workshops. And uh, uh, from that website of that the first scaling Bitcoin workshop, that the original idea or original goal of start this workshop is uh, to aid the technical consensus building process here so organizing the pair of workshops, two workshops to collect technical criteria, present a proposal and evaluate technical materials. And uh, there are with the academic discipline to analyze that fully consider that complex thread of between the decentralization, security and operational, something like that. And uh, we also aim to in involve that NIST shastri completion process. I will explain it later. But anyway, that this is an interesting collaboration between between that decentralized Bitcoin engineering community and the academics, and we had two phases to discuss about that. In the phase one in Montreal, so we uh, tried to see setting the evaluation, creating some evaluation criteria and the trade-off analysis between that scalability and security and operation. And on phase two, so we uh, had uh, some presentation of the potential idea to solve that issues and the review of the technical technical proposal and this with simulation and the benchmark results. And uh, I would like to explain that uh, what needs to shall competition process. This is an interesting process. In, in 2004, so in in August uh, at the crypto conference, this is a top conference for the crypto cryptology research and uh, that 
MD5, live MD, and Shazel and the potential Shaw one was broken with uh, some uh, very two or three pages papers uh, provided by the Chinese cryptographers. And uh, so after that, so we, everyone in, the, in this planet, every, every cryptographer in this planet uh, should uh, deal with this problem. Uh, the good news is that SHA2 is still secure. Please correct, correct me if I'm wrong, Patrick, but uh, SHA2 is still secure. But uh, we uh, had to just develop a new hash standard instead of SHA1. So this is alternative to SHA2. And uh, we had the open competition from international uh, research scientists. And uh, it's, it's, it's a almost same as the AES competition held before 2000. And we succeeded in making technology consensus among, uh, among global research scientists by its careful academic process. Yeah. Yeah, that original intention why needs to uh, organize that kind of competition for shares free selection is uh, this is competition promotes the research of the hash function. Before that, so you know that we use the hash function uh, for the data signature or time stamping services and so on. But uh, we don't, we didn't have that enough academic knowledge about the, how we measure the security level of a hash function throughout this competition. Uh, we had a much research result and knowledge from the competition that this is a good process for us and uh, but even if that uh, that shall, shall one was compromised that uh, this had a shot to as an alternative but the uh, uh, shot to has a similar scientific academic scientific structure as shall one this is Marco Dunga's structure and uh, we try to uh, create that another option uh, from the scratch uh, by using that different types of design principle. And uh, anyway, that, that process works well. And that the practice from the Shastri competition uh, by, by using the global uh, collaboration of the cryptographers, uh, uh, we could create that open, open discussion and the public verifiable. This is important for the blockchain world. Uh, uh, this, they are the key to the fairness of the, uh, that the academic process. And uh, we had uh, so firm requirement, evaluation criteria, version platform, the hardware and software uh, performances. And uh, we discussed the tons of the target application and the platform. And uh, the cooperation with academic community, between the academic community and engineering committee is very important for the trust and consent for the, our use case. And we aim to design diversity, as, as I explained. And uh, this slide shows that my presentation at Scaling Bitcoin one in Montreal in 2015. So I was there. So I think that there were there over 100, 150 participants from uh, all over the world, and to discuss about the potential scaling solutions for the Bitcoin. But I was the only one speaker from Japan, and I was the only one participant. <laughs> From Japan, <laughs> only one, only one Japanese Japanese scientists or engineers are there. Very strange thing, but uh, anyway, that uh, so I and I propose that so involvement. So I transferred that my past experience over the NIST hash function accomplishing, and uh, so I propose that so the way to involve that process. And uh, six six months uh, after that, so I I end up in the Wong. Uh, uh, gave a talk at the MIT Bitcoin Expo, so well, uh, held in March 2016. So Pinda is my old friend, and he's an internet pioneer. Yeah, he's a he's an initiator of that the internet in Hong Kong. So in in in, in, in the past century, and uh, so at that uh, at that that presentation, so you can find that uh, the YouTube video. But, uh, so we. Uh, uh, they create that initiation of the bsafe.network. network. I will, I will explain a little bit more about that later. And uh, I also, uh, we also propose that a blockchain research network and a decentralized academic platform. So this is a very similar idea that currently we, currently we discuss so, as a so-called decentralized science. And uh, this is a slide, a slide that we presented at the MIT Bitcoin Expo at the time. So, 
we have that neutral uh, blockchain research network by global universities. And on uh, top of that, so we have that some platform, so smart contract or something like that to manage that papers, patent, so academic discussions or research funding or uh, reward to the discussion or something like that. So this is our, our original idea in 2016. And uh, yeah, this could uh, provide many, that many uh, good things for the research scientists, I, I, I believe. But uh, so this is a, this was the original idea so we presented, and after that so we discussed the many uh, industrial industrial partners cooperation, uh, how we implement this kind of ideas. So this is a, the last sketch in 2016, and uh, so of course that the universities or research institutes well, or private companies has a uh, so capability of the academic research that so the universities uh, receive the funding of some fund or some money from that this platform and to provide with some research results and of course that so that we have the public uh, or private uh, funding from the you know JST or NSF or some private companies uh, provide money for that this platform and we can uh, some collaboration with uh, some commercialized commercialization process uh, at that time so I thought of one idea that so uh, collaborating with a matching Matching platform like AngelList, you know, AngelList is a United United States platform to connect that uh, engineers, entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, or something like that. But so, if we can connect that kind of research platform to the uh, matching platform that entrepreneurship or startup ecosystem, so this could be that interesting uh, cycle of the uh, process in that uh, that ecosystem. Anyway, that's uh, what we. Uh, did in that so 2015 and 16. And I will double quick quick that what this of the network is. The original idea is, comes from that NSF net for the internet. So this slide shows that the history of that the, the internet before commercialization of that internet. You know that uh, as you may know that uh, the development of the internet ecosystem technology happened in that so 1969 with the idea of the ARPANET. Uh, initiated by DAPA. And uh, so the commercialization of internet was happened in 1994 or five, something like that. You, you, you may remember that, that, that Windows 95. And uh, but, uh, so after that ARPANET, so there was a CSNet, this is a network by universities. And, uh, and after that 1985, and was taking that 10 years before the commercialization of internet. So NSF, this is a so United States version of that JST, provided that tons of money for the United States universities to create a test of it by, by universities. And that was taking this 10 years, that, 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 that technology for the internet uh, matured by that whole academic process uh, to create a decentralized ecosystem. And at the same time, so I described that the another arrow so from 1977 from the 1995. So in 1977, so UC Berkeley started the Berkeley Software Distribution Project to gather that any software code to support that 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 it was a Unix system that to support that global internet architecture. Yeah, so, so AT&T Unix uh, started in 1969, this is the same timing of the opponent. And uh, so 1977, that's the beginning of the BSD Unix. And we're taking about that 20, uh, uh, 18 years, that so UC Berkeley is the center of that uh, software code to get together the high quality and the uh, high reliability software to support BSD Unix. And that UBS Unix was uh, commercialized by that DEC or some microsystems. And that process uh, ended in 1995. So, you know, that's, um, uh, for example, the Murai sensei, Jun Murai, so uh, sometimes say that uh, so his IPv6 software is, is run in that currently Mac OS. But uh, so he contributed his software to BSD. And that software is uh, implemented in that Mac OS at this moment. 
And uh, there are many outcomes that Barclay Software Distribution Project, PSD project, that this is academic research and effort to match the cost of the Unix. And the many uh, child or many uh, product, byproduct, free BSD, open BSD, or Mac OS, something like that. And uh, this is a firm foundation of the internet ecosystem. And uh, so, that, so that project produces a collection of the knowledge, tons of experts and engineers who help that development of Linux and current internet software. Anyway, that history is most important to create some decentralized ecosystem. And that this is a uh, strong uh, source of the, our idea to initiate the BSF.net network. It plays the same role as the NSF net and the BSD software distribution system. So it's a neutral and uh, stable and sustainable research network. It's a test of it, like uh, NSF net. And it's provide a source of the neutral knowledge of, by academia. And uh, there are five reasons why that university is an important place to this kind of activity that uh, the university is a place for the experiment, uh, place of the neutrality, and the place of the diversity, and the, uh, the place of the international collaboration. And the number of universities is over 15,000, so it's scalable to, uh, to, to extend the footprint of this kind of activities. And there, so, during 2016, we gathered 31 universities from all over the world. And uh, anyway, that, that is an interesting uh, international collaboration. And the main activities are the, mainly the international joint research over the, that, that kind of actual physical research network. Because that, so, you know, of course, that we can have the, some uh, simulators for the, to, ex, to do the experiment on the blockchain related protocols and its implementation. But, uh, so, you know, Bitcoin protocol uh, assumes that existence of that some tiny nodes in that, uh, okay, South Africa or something like that. So with a very uh, narrow band of internet connection. And uh, if, if we could some do the, some experiment uh, with diversified uh, internet connection environment, that is helpful. And uh, this is uh, the place for the experiment of the theoretical research result. And uh, we, he provided some evaluation of the technology. This is the lava stamp uh, before that before uh, bring that that software code to the testnet, and uh, this is the place of the competition, like a shadow competition. And uh, this is a, a example of that project we did in, until 2019 before the pandemic. So, for example, test a test of the segregated witness and the. Uh, monitoring of Bitcoin folks that Bitcoin cash or Bitcoin gold or something like that happened in 2017. And uh, so the long-term blockchain that which is a, which is a strongly resilient of the, uh, from that, uh, the compromise of underlying cryptographic algorithms or layer to technology competition or something like that. Anyway, so we did many uh, project, uh, global project with a wide range of academic peoples. Yeah, so I have that 15 minutes left, but uh, so I will con continue that. That this is a history of that that the, the, the how decentralized uh, ecosystem could be alive, produced alive. But uh, so going to that that so going to that discussion of the decentralized science, how decentralizing technology or decentralized eco ecosystem could help the scientific. Uh, process, but uh, I would like to emphasize that that so if we think that utilizing blockchain technology, blockchain-like technology, uh, we need to aware that value of the permissionless ecosystem instead of the decentralized ecosystem and its hardness to maintain. I in, in this part, I intentionally use that permissionless, the word of permissionless instead of decentralization. You know, the permissionless innovation is a key word here. So, you know, that the, the permissionless, you know, blockchain like a Bitcoin, Ethereum is a most important, important uh, philosophy for, of the, uh, the blockchain ecosystem that it, about the permissionless innovation could empower all age to create a new innovation of the ecosystem. So it's, we can increase the number of the potential innovators or something. And it's a solution to innovation dilemma. 
Yeah, but the permission is innovation is a common idea. Why we need that kind of things? And that the internet is the most successful and only successful case of the permission innovation with decentralized global ecosystem. Yeah, before before the internet. So for example, in France there was Minitel. This is a, some multimedia communication system provided by government or captain system. Uh, is also the similar kind of uh, mechanism. So provided by the Denden Kosher. Denden Kosher. This is a Japanese governmental agency to provide. Uh, telecommunication services but after the internet that it unbundles that ownership of communication channel and the right to the multilateral communication so you know that in the internet uh, ecosystem has a mechanism of the routing bgp and the layering technology that so tcp ip or something like that so that the internet was called as speed network uh, from the architecture point of view but it could unbundles Many business structure uh, of the, the communication after after the after the internet. So we have the Cisco Net, Netscape, uh, Yahoo, Google. Then so someone think about that how we connect. This is so that just so one direction of the communication by using the internet, the so called Web One, Web One Point Zero. But after having that multilateral communication system like SNS, so we have the rich communication among society. Then after that, so if we uh, after having that some uh, smartphone or GPS system, that that is a strong uh, that important building blocks to create a Uber or Airbnb, or Grab House, something like that. Anyway, that so unbundling uh, uh, of that that kind of building block facilitate producing new services, business and ecosystem. That is important, and uh, that kind of decentralization layering is. Uh, promote the unbundling and the permissionless innovation. So this is the same thing, but uh, so before the internet, so that so some some services provided by one company. So this is monolithic that, so the company owns the business logic, technology, and the uh, customers. So this is a very uh, monolithic, monolithic uh, structure. But after the, the internet, so we, that the so entity which provide a business logic applied technology or fundamental technology are very different things that if we would like to create a new business model we can pick up that the best uh, entities which provide a business logic applied technology or something like that like this is a the process of unboundering and reboundering and that and the, i would like to emphasize that the purpose of introducing that decentralized technology this is a, you know, decentralized is a very ambiguous word, but so in the original Satoshi's Bitcoin papers, so it says that it eliminates the trusted third party. You know, the trusted third party is a point of failure. If that, that entity uh, fails, that everything fails. So going back to the original question in the morning provided Hamada-san, so he told that the, some of pain points is a, you know that currently that so so big publisher is one of the pain point for our scientific society you know that currently that 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 kind of big publisher is a point of single point of failure of our society you know that in, involving that in the internet type of technology or blockchain technology so we can eliminate existence of we might be able to uh, eliminate that single point of failure that it's uh, provide a resiliency against uh, some fault and uh, it could uh, provide some business continuity yeah this is a true true reason why that kind of technology is essential potential potentially essential to solve that kind of point of, fa of failure problem yeah i think that i need to need to hurry up that uh, at the same time that so with when we think about open science or something permissionless science or something like that so that mathematics or this kind of ecosystem is uh, global not international global and international is a different idea but uh, we don't have to rely on that any nations any jurisdiction but at the same time that to solve some uh, some conflict we need to have some government governance mechanisms so 
as someone told that so governance and government is a different idea, but we need to have some, some types of the governance mechanisms inside our decentralized ecosystem. Yeah, to, to create such kind of that, that the governance system, we need to have some multi-stakeholder discussion. Because that, so we, for example, scientists create some idea, DAO of uh, smart contract, something like that, and the engineer will create a software code to implement that. But uh, if, if everyone use that, so, you know, that, that, that engineer will be a king of that world, but uh, this is not the decentralized thing, so we have the king, but uh, the, you know, the internet uh, doesn't have a king. And uh, anyway, that, so we need to have the, some uh, collaborative work to create a good governance with wide range of the expertise, because uh, even for the Bitcoin blockchain, so it's, it is a collection of that knowledge about computer science, cryptography, network, salary, economics, law, many kind of things. We need to have that uh, collaboration with wide range of background. Yeah, to facilitate, facilitate that kind of multi-stakeholder discussion. So we need to have that common place and common languages to have the, to have the harmonized, harmonized incentives. Then, so, you know, that currently it's an internet society, ITF, ICANN, well, that, that kind of non-profit organization is a good place to have such kind of multi-stakeholder discussion. Unfortunately, we don't have such kind of things uh, uh, in the blockchain world before, uh, so we are now doing that. But uh, that kind of collaboration is needed to, hold, uh, to create that healthy ecosystem or healthy governance for the decentralized thing. And this is one interesting slide in 2019. At that year, that, so Japan was a host country of G20, and uh, so I joined that with this, this panel discussion of the D20. D20 meetings, but uh, at that time that Jim Rai was a uh, uh, moderator of that, that panel discussion, but we invited Adam Buck, you know, it's, it's a center of that, that center person is Adam Buck, he's a <laughs> famous uh, cypherpunk guy, <laughs> and uh, so, you know, that, so JFSA intentionally placed that, that, that Adam Buck as a center, center of stage, but uh, we have the multi-technical discussion with academia, traditional bank, banking sector, the regulators, and cyberpunk banks uh, over that academic uh, neutral uh, discussion uh, foundation. But uh, this is a so needed thing to create that, to keep the ecosystem decentralized, but well governed. And the last month, uh, the end of last month, the IETF meeting 116 was held in Yokohama. Is there someone who attended that IET, IETF meeting? Unfortunately, that we have, we don't have that kind of person. But uh, so IETF is a non-profit organization to discuss about internet technology standard and its operation. And uh, so IETF hold a meet three meet three meetings per year to discuss uh, many technology operation, its architecture to keep that ecosystem this fully decentralized. They did their tons of the huge amount of work to keep that ecosystem healthy over 30 years. Yeah, we, if the, we would like to introduce that decentralized ecosystem for scientific mechanisms, we need to hold that kind of meetings. So, you know, that over 1,000 or 2,000 engineers coming to the same place to Yokohama, to Yokohama that in one place that, but that, that kind of that, that, that grassroots discussion is most important. So this slide shows that, that current, the internet governance mechanisms. You know, so this is a global space, internet press space. So internet society is a legal entity to, to manage everything, but I can manage the domain name or res, internet resources, and the IETF discuss about the technology standard, the operational standard. So there are no profit here, and everyone participate that discussion as an individual. And at the same time that for the international press, this is a government press. So IGF Internet Government Governance Forum was established under the United Nations and the government will join that discussion as one of the stakeholders. But uh, the question is who maintain that kind of huge, huge mechanisms. So there are 1000 participants for every IT meeting. So we, I think we need that. So over one, 100, 100 million dollar by year to maintain that kind of huge ecosystem. 
So who maintains the common, that kind of commons, you know, that common. So we don't, we don't have to, uh, we have to avoid that kind of common strategy. And uh, someone should pay money for to maintain, to maintaining that, that kind of system. You know, the income source of the internet society and IETF is, uh, you know, membership fee or donation grants, or there is a IET, IET endowment. Uh, but the uh, interesting ecosystem is also, you know, that you, we often use that dot .org domain, some, for example, something like that. So many dot .org domain, domain name, but uh, the registration fee for that dot .org domain we used for that maintaining the internet society. Yeah, this is some kind of the tax, but uh, this is a very clever way to, to, to keep this world decentralized way. Unfortunately, so BSEF.net network is not active at this moment due to that pandemic or something like that. But uh, some of these, some of that main is, is a lack of decentralized funding source. You know, like ITF doing very well, but uh, you know, we, we don't have uh, such kind of the clever way in the, in the blockchain ecosystem to maintain that, that kind of commons. And uh, the other is uh, not only money, that other is a human resource. So university rely on the students, but the students graduate. <laughs> yeah, we, we cannot maintain that good student forever. And uh, for that, we don't have that uh, stable funding source for students. The maintenance is not the university's mandate. <laughs> yeah, that there's no NSF. So the NSF provides tons of money for 10 years to, to, for, to that United Universities for the NSF net. But for the blockchain world on the decentralized science world, there's no NSF, NSF to maintain or for te, over 10 years. Uh, uh, that, that, is a, that is a things we need, that we need to discuss with the Japanese government or United States government to, to promote that decentralized science idea. Yeah, the other thing is that this, is, this table is coming from the report from GFSA on the, the current uh, real status of the this DeFi uh, project. For example, Unispa, MakerDAO, Abe. So you can see that that uh, voting ratio for the each governance token voting, only that 5% or 10, under 10% voting ratio. You know, can, can you say that this is a decentralized process for the DAO? <laughs> I don't think so. That so this is a real, real, reality of that human society. And uh, the, the, the another bad news is there. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, so we have that. Uh, sorry for that Japanese Japanese website, but a couple of weeks ago, so we received that 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 news that so a Japanese DAO closed just one month after receiving a prize at a major hackathon event. You know that DAO is not sustainable. Yeah, we need to more hard work on that to maintain that kind of uh, sustainability of that kind of event. Yeah, so give me five minutes more. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, so by, Please by, go on, yeah. yeah by, by using that less of five minutes, so I'd like to suggest some uh, something for our journey to kill pain point for, for scientists to buy blockchain. Yeah, this is a... Uh, uh, Chaos map uh, that Hamada san Hamada presented that at the morning session. But uh, I have many objections, a huge objection for that chaos map. So we forget that most essential stakeholder in this world. Can you imagine that? What, what is the most import, important stakeholder? We should write that kind of thing. Scientist itself. You know, so there are many, some project name here, uh, some uh, company name here, but uh, we should think that, 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 you know, that scientist is the most important, essential stakeholder in this world. We should write that scientist, human, in the center of that, 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 that kind of figure. Then, so we should write that name of each project, how that each project supports scientists. This is a huge mistake when we create that kind of chaos map. But we should write that that, that most important 
stakeholder, human, in the center of this, that, this kind of figure. Yeah, this slide is, a, so that's a slide I presented that research group by JFSA. So we have that different types of human here. So regulators or so engineers, scientists, consumers or business entity like that. You know, that, that, that chaos map, right? Only that kind of business entity. But uh, you know, that business entity is a so point of failure and the point of profit, that's fine. But uh, you know, that regulators or government people as a point of responsibility. You know, so if that, so if the XJP fail, but so JFS guys work hard to secure that, the money of the customers. We need to create that some good and clever ecosystem design like that, that dot org uh, registration fee for the internet governance. But uh, we need to think about that so the balance of the point of failure, point of responsibility, and the point of profit. And uh, for that, the D, D, D side, uh, stand for the decentralized uh, science. But uh, I uh, would like to propose a use word of the polycentric stewardship instead of decentralization. Uh, as I told that, so, so for the centralized trust, you know, that, that's a huge, that, that big publisher control everything. So big publisher could be that single point of failure. We need to avoid that. But uh, on the other hand, it's a fully decentralized uh, uh, world that uh, it is not clear that who is responsible for what. And uh, of course, a Bitcoin could be that one, only one successful case for the fully decentralized uh, process. But uh, with thinking that, that humans in this society, not only the scientists, but as many other stakeholders related to science policy or something like that, we have already that, that trustable stakeholder here. And the multi-stakeholder collaboration or designing the incentive mechanism design among existing stakeholders based on permissionless data trust foundation like blockchain could be that wide, wide clever way clever way for creating the decentralized finance open finance and we started that blockchain governance initiative network begin to discuss that how we create that decentralized ecosystem uh, by all stakeholders uh, following that g20 communique in 2019 we will have that next general meeting like a like IT meeting uh, in three weeks in Croatia. So I don't think that uh, we, can, we can plan a trip to Croatia in three weeks, but uh, uh, please, uh, if you are interested in that kind of discussion, so anyone can join uh, that, that discussion uh, without any permission. Uh, I would like to recommend to you to that join discussion at the beginning. And uh, this is the last slide. Sorry for extent extension that uh, uh, do work hard to reach common understanding by fine great analysis of us as a human, as a, as a human scientist. For example, that so the needs for the each scientist are very different. For example, so the, the request from that uh, the 20 scientist is something like that. For example, that before that this is a postdoc or, or student, a postdoc, something like that. But uh, so that uh, needs for that scientist are different for thirties, forties, fifties, or young students. So incentives are different for each individual scientist. Uh, and it depends on that area of research. So I, I'm a research scientist who's of mathematics and cryptography, but uh, we, we don't have to have some experiments. <laughs> but uh, so different, as a research scientist in the different area has a different request for the, uh, the the science ecosystem, and uh, and uh, be human centric, as I told, not methodology centric. And uh, you know, sim simple, very simple involvement. So we have that many ideas to involve the DAO or, or smart contract to enhance our uh, scientific scientific uh, ecosystem. But the uh, simple involvement of a smart contract token and game theory doesn't meet uh, how his scientist life this is life that's and uh, so no method fits all and i yeah this is a this is a great event 
to start discussion of the decentralized science. But uh, the word DSI might be different after careful discussion by all stakeholders. Of course, it still might be a DSI in 2030, but uh, it might be polycentric science, uh, terrain science governance, or permissionless something, blah, blah, blah. So it might be different. So, but uh, uh, create, create, uh, discussing that appropriate word uh, for that to, to have the better scientific community, that kind of discussion is most, most important. And let's begin to learn from the lessons from past efforts. Thank you very much.